Dear all, welcome to CP Plus. I'm Yaqing from Johns Hopkins University. I'm presenting you our cockroach-inspired legged robot that can traverse multiple types of large obstacles. As we all know, the animals are good at traversing complex terrain. Here this cockroach is traversing a grass terrain by transitioning between locomotor modes and use various strategies to physically interact with the grass. To understand how animals achieve such excellent locomotion behavior, researchers build robots as physical models to understand dynamic biosystems. Most research is focused on studying how to generate and stabilize steady state locomotion, like how the guinea flow around a flat terrain and react to a sudden drop, and how cockroaches navigate on complex rough terrain. Aside from the excellence in doing a single task, in the real world, the animals can do various things using the same set of morphology. To do this, the animal uses its appendages multifunctionally and use excitations. Here, this ghost crab can use the same set of legs to evacuate, pass, and pack sand when burrowing, and the cockroach can use their wings to form a streamlined body shell to traverse obstacles and use its wings to self right We also want this multifunctionality and excitation in robotics. It's easy to understand that both in biology and robotics, when an appendage is more specialized for one certain task, it loses more generosity to be functional in other tasks. To understand this trade-off, between the performance and the multifunctionality in biology, we can use robots as physical models and systematically vary the parameters and analyze the effect. On the other hand, understand how an animal deal with it give us insight to achieve multifunctionality in robot design. Here we focused on the scenario of an animal like a discoid cockroach or a robot to traverse a complex 3D terrain like a forest floor. To do this, the animal or the robot will face various challenges, and the an animal should dynamically interact with the terrain and use and transition between various locomotor modes to achieve each challenge and traverse. Here we abstracted five distinct challenges. The challenges are the pillars, which represented isolated, rigid, large vertical obstacles, beams, which represented densely cluttered, large flexible obstacles, bumps, which represent large horizontal obstacles with a height increase. Gaps, which represent large horizontal obstacles with a high drop. And self-writing, when an animal occasionally flip over when negotiating large obstacles. Informed by the strategies that we discover from recent studies to overcome each type of challenge, we come up with a multifunctional robot design, as I will elaborate. We design our robot, Omiroach, that was promising to overcome all the challenges in traversing complex terrain. This robot have a rounded lower body shell, a pair of actuated wings that can open and close, and a two degree of freedom tail that can pitch and yaw, as well as S-shaped legs. Note that this talk is only presenting our initial development and testing of the robot. More systematic testing on this robot should be done in the future. Here is the robot traversing a pillar. Traversal of pillar benefits from a rounded body shape. With a rounded shell, the robot can turn away the pillar and traverse. Well, if the shell is cuboidal, which is common in robots, the robot will climb and be trapped around the pillar. Here is the robot traversing beams. Traversal of beams benefits from a rounded body shape and a body oscillation. The active tail oscillation induces the robot body roll oscillation, which enables the robot to traverse via gap between the beams, which is 75% body weight. Well, without that, the robot will pitch against the beams and get stuck. This figure shows that to traverse a beam with a gap of 75% body weight, the robot should at least roll up to 50 degrees. Here is the robot traversing a bump. Traversal of bumps benefits from a high forward speed and tail pitch motion. With active tail pitch motion, the robot can climb over a bump with 2.5 hip height and traverse it. Well, without that, the robot will deflect away rather than climb it. This figure shows the robot and the bump of 2.5 hip height side by side. Here is the robot traversing a gap. Traversal of gap also benefits from a high forward speed and tail pitch motion. With or without the tail motion, the robot always fell into gap instead of raging over. We speculate that this is because our robot is so heavy that the tail motion cannot lead the robot to have a high initial pitch when approaching to the gap and did not have enough forward speed for bridging. 
will improve this by using faster motors in the future. And here is the robot self writing. It benefits from combinations of appendages pushing against the ground and the perturbation of body to overcome the potential energy barrier. Here, this robot first opens its wings to lift its body up and then also lays its tail to shake itself to one side and self right. To briefly sum up, our robot achieved multifunctional locomotion with high performance. Here is a summary table of the robot parameters and quantified performance. And here we have the robot traverse all the challenges we have in one trial. The robot was able to do this under manual control, which is analogous to a cockroach traverse a complex terrain. We also found an interesting example of robotic excitation in our project. That is, active tail designed for bump and gap traversal and self writing can also facilitate beam traversal. Here we will further look into how this active tail motion affects the beam traversal performance. We have four stereotype tail operating mode tested. The home static mode, where the static tail with zero pitch and zero yaw relative to the chassis. The pitch down static mode, where the static tail pointing downward with 90 degree pitch and zero degree yaw relative to the chassis. The pitch down and yaw static mode, where the static tail pointing downward and sideways with a 90 degree pitch and 15 degree yaw relative to the chassis. And the pitch down with yaw oscillation mode, where a downward pointing lateral oscillation tail with a 90 degree pitch relative to the chassis and a manual controlled yaw oscillation from minus 15 degree to 15 degree at two hertz. We also vary the robot's approaching angle to the beam in zero degree, 15 degree, 30 degree, and 45 degree, and cross it with the tail operating modes. For each tail operating mode and approaching angle combination, we conduct 10 trials with a total of 116 trials. Here are some example trials for each tail treatment. For the case of home static mode and pitch down and yaw static mode, the robot could not traverse the beams. Well, for the case of pitch down static mode and pitch down with yaw oscillation mode, the robot could roll and traverse the beams. Here are the results. For traversal probability, the robot can traverse the beam only to the tail as the pitch down static mode or the pitch down with your oscillation mode. And for these two modes, the traversal time using the pitch down with your oscillation mode is significantly less than that using the pitch down static mode. We summarize that a static tail that can pitch down to support the body could allow the robot to roll into the gap and traverse, but only when the approaching angle is appropriate. And the tail oscillation as an excitation was useful in terms of increasing the traversal probability and decreasing the traversal time. To sum up, we build a robot to overcome five terrestrial locomotion challenges, that is to traverse pillars, beams, bumps, gaps, and self writing And here the robots are used as physical models to study animal locomotion on complex terrain. Also, the animal provides insights on achieving multifunctionality on robot design. Also, active tail motion designed to be used in bump and gap traversal and self writing can also facilitate beam traversal, which is an example of excitation. As a next step, we want to use the robot to understand how physical interaction is mediated by neural mechanics. As it is well known, the animal uses sensory feedback control along with mechanical preflex to interact with the environment. To do this, the animals are equipped with sensors to sense the contact and the force from the environment. That is the exterior receptors like bristles, peripheral receptors like hair plates, companiform cilium, and cornitonal organ. For example, the tactical hairs on the animal exoskeleton can sense the exterior contact place and the force directly. And companiform cilium can sense the exoskeleton surface deformation, which can inform the external force. Here we also equip the robot with contact and force sensing. To sense the conduct point with the opticals, we cover the robot surface with the section conductive material. Each conductive cell is connected to a competitive sensor. We also cover the opticals with the conductive material. When the robot contact with the opticals, its competitors will change and the robot will detect the contact. Using this method, the robot can sense the contact point. This contact sensor is like an exterior receptor for an animal. 
to sense the external force, we separated the robot into parts and connect each part with the robot mainframe via a 3D4 sensor. This 3D4 sensor is simply daisy chain low cells. The force sensor is like a proprioceptor for an animal. Here is our real-time sensing results. This demo is on a new robot. In the middle is the developed view of the robot surface. Each LED represents a cell of a contact sensor. When it's on, it means that it feels contact at that cell. The bars shows forces on each part. When we add force to the robot, it can sense the contact point and the force pretty well. Here is a scenario where the robot traverse beams, analog to a cockroach traversing beams. The robot can move forward and also lay up and down and can actively control its roll, pitch, and yaw torque. Together with the sensing ability, the robot is promising to do real-time optical type recognition and mechanical characterization and uh, auto mode selection and transition. Other relative work is also presented in SIGBI Plus. C4 sensing help differentiate stiff and flimsy beam opticals and facilitate traversal from Qi Han Xuan for more. I'd like to acknowledge my lab mate Qi Han and Ratang for discussion and our funding sources. Thanks.